Hi, boys and girls. This is Ms. Cornelio again, doing your last video for this week uh, for science. Okay, so in science, we've been learning a lot about animals, their habitats, uh, food chains, um, how they depend on each other uh, with plants and living organisms. But today, boys and girls, we are going to learn about how things like temperature and precipitation um, affect the environment, okay? So um, we know what an environment is, is living and non-living things in one place, and this is the place where an animal meets its needs, right? So now we're gonna learn about what are some things, some factors that uh, affect um, our environment and affect the growth and the behavior of, of living things, okay? So we're gonna learn about two factors, temperature, and precipitation. Now we know the precipitation means rain, snow, sleet, or hail, right? We've learned that already when we learned about weather unit, right? So we're going to learn about how these two factors affect an environment and then affect animals. So here we go. A factor is a cause of something changing, okay? So here we have a factor is a cause of something changing, okay? Now how are living things are affected? So let's talk about temperature, okay? So temperature, we know that temperature can increase, go higher, or we know that temperature can decrease, which means go lower, go down and gets colder, right? So when temperature increases, it gets warmer. And when temperature decreases, it gets cooler, right? So animals tend to do, or living organisms, in this case, we're gonna talk about animals and plants. Um, when the temperature changes, the animals also start doing different things. So that's what we're gonna learn about to get today. So if we look right here, boys and girls, it says, when the temperature increases or gets warmer, animals move to a new habitat to meet their basic need for water. Okay, so it gets warmer, they have to find a new habitat where there's water because that's one of the needs of animals. Animals burrow or dig under the ground for protection and shelter. So when it's super hot out there, these animals try to find an environment where it's cooler for them, right? Uh, to protect themselves and their shelters. So obviously we know that when temperatures get hot, what do we do? As organisms as living organisms we try to find a place where it's um cooler right i mean think about it at recess when it, the, it's really really hot where do most of our friends go in the shade why because it's cooler so we do the same thing temperature affects us as well now we're going to talk about what happens when temperature decreases decreases means the temperature goes down and it gets colder now here's where we're, gonna, where we're gonna see most of our changes, okay? So here we have three things, okay? Animals can hibernate, animals can migrate, or, and plants can become dormant, okay? So animals can hibernate, animals can migrate, or plants become dormant, okay? So here we go. So when temperature decreases and it gets colder, we have some animals that decide to go into hibernation. They find in a shelter and during the winter, they go in there and they sleep, okay? Why? Why would they just not stay outside in the wonderful snow, cold weather? Why? You're right, because there's no food. So if there's no food, why would I wanna stay outside, right? So during the winter, the food supplies goes down and animals store their food under the ground for the time they are in their dens for winter, some of them. But some animals go into a very deep sleep, just like bears. So they hibernate, some of them, go and hibernate with their food under the ground or in a tree inside or things like that. 
or other animals take a big long nap, right? They hibernate. That's what hibernate is. Now, other animals migrate. What does that mean, Miss Cornelia, right? Migrate, migrate. They move from one place to the other place to search for food in a warmer place. They go from the cold weather and they go find a place where it's much warmer and where they can find um, food, okay? And they only do this during the winter when there's no food and when the temperature gets cold. They all come back again in the spring. Can you think of animals that migrate, that go where it's warm in the winter and come back when it's spring? Think about it, Tex. Do you know? If you said birds, you are absolutely correct. Birds migrate, whales migrate, butterflies migrate. These are animals that in the winter go to a different environment to find food and to find warmth, okay? So finally, there are our living organism plants. Now, in the winter, many of our trees are bare. Not bare, the animal, they're bare, they have no leaves. So in the winter, boys and girls, these um, trees, they lose their leaves and they look like they're dead, right? And many of you are like, oh my gosh, look, Miss Cornelio, that tree died. Well, it's not dead, boys and girls. During the fall, the trees lose their leaves and they store food in their roots and they become dormant, okay? They become dormant. So um, during this dormant stage, the food that's stored in their roots helps them survive through the winter. In spring, when the temperatures increase and the rain begins again, the leaves will start to grow, the leaves will start making new food, and then we have green, beautiful trees again, right? So yes, our temperature does affect living organisms. It causes some animals to hibernate, it causes some animals to migrate, it causes plants to become dormant. Now, one last thing that we're gonna be talking about is precipitation. Remember, it can be rain, it can be snow, it could be sleet, it could be hail, right? So precipitation also causes our environments to change. How? Well, if there's a lot of precipitation, we know what happens here in Houston, flooding, you're right. So what happens to those animals that are in our environment during floods? Yeah, they have to move to higher grounds and search for shelters, right? Seeds may get washed away from all those plants that are underwater and they might grow in new places. That is something good, right? Seed spreading, but not for animals because animals are displaced from their shelters and they have to go find new shelters. Now, that's flooding, that's if there's a lot, a lot of precipitation. Now, something else happens if there's not too much precipitation, less rain, something called a drought. The word drought sounds like dry, right? This is a time when there's less rain, not enough rain for our plants, for our dirt, for our animals. So if there's no water, if there's no, uh, uh, if the pond dries out, a lot of our animals have to go find another place to live. And those animals that can move to another area, guess what happens? You're right, they die. So yes, precipitation can be, uh, can affect our environment in not a very so good way, okay? So now that we have learned about temperature and precipitation in our lesson for today, I have three new words that we learned today. Hibernate, migrate, and dormant. 
these are three things that whenever the temperature goes up, I'm sorry, the temperature decreases, it goes down and it gets cooler, animals and plants, this happens to animals or plants. So animals that hibernate means, dun, 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 yes. Animals that hibernate is when an animal goes into a deep sleep to save energy during the winter. Migrate, what does migrate mean? Remember, hiber, hibernate, right? Migrate, migrate. That means an animal goes from one place to another place. So when an animal moves to another place in search of food and water, that's called migrate or migration. And then dormant is not animals, dormant are plants. Dormant is when a plant rests or slows down growth because the temperature has changed. Okay, so now we have the hedgehog here. It hibernates, the birds migrate, and the tree is dormant. So, Today we learn about hibernation, migration, and do being dormant, right? So I have a video that I want you guys to see before I tell you your assignment. Uh, let me just make sure I shared it the right way. Okay, and it is about factors in their environment that affect living things. Pay attention of what hibernation is, what migration is, and what being dormant is as well. Okay, let me stop the bit. Factors in the environment that affect living things. How does a change in temperature or precipitation in an environment affect the amount of water and food available? We know that an environment includes the living and non-living things in an area, and plants and animals are the living things. They both have basic needs. Plants need water, nutrients, sunlight, air, and space to live. Animals need water, food, air, and space or shelter. Environments help plants and animals meet their basic needs. But environments change. Throughout the year, our weather changes. The seasons throughout the year each have characteristics of weather that are predictable. Summer is typically our warmest season. Winter is normally our coldest season. Spring is normally our wettest or rainiest season. Those characteristics are predictable patterns that repeat throughout the year. Spring, then summer, then fall, then winter, then spring, then summer, fall, and winter again and again. These changes affect the living things. The changes in weather change how living things look as well, or how living things behave. The tree in the summertime looks very different than the tree in the wintertime. The tree in the summertime has lots of fruit and plenty of leaves. The tree in the wintertime is bare, no leaves and no fruit. In fact, it almost looks dead. Living things have ways of surviving when their environments change. During which season do you think plants and animals might struggle the most to meet their basic needs? Look at the pictures. There's evidence of a season. Which season do you think these pictures might represent? I notice ice and frozen water during the winter time when our temperatures are coldest. It might be most difficult for plants to get the water they need and for animals to get the water and food they need. <clears throat> Temperature and precipitation are factors that affect the environment. 
a factor is something that causes a change. When the temperatures change, they might increase or decrease. Summertime, our temperatures increase and feel warmer. Some animals may move to habitat where they might be able to better meet their need for water or food. And some animals may burrow or dig under the ground for protection and shelter from the heat. When temperatures decrease and feel cooler, like in the winter time, some animals may migrate or move to areas with warmer temperatures to find food. Some animals may hibernate or burrow underground and sleep to save energy. And some animals, I mean some plants, may go dormant, a resting stage during the winter time that helps them save energy. Precipitation changes as well. Sometimes precipitation may increase. Increases in precipitation may include more rain, maybe even flooding conditions. Some animals may move to a higher ground in search of shelter, and some seeds may wash away and grow in new places. But when precipitation decreases, we have less precipitation or less rain. In those dry conditions, we may even have a drought. Animals may move to where they can find water, and some plants may die. Okay, so now that you have heard a little bit about more about um, um, things that affect our environment, this is what you're going to do for science. For science, you do have a page that you have to do. I'm sorry, guys, I had said no pages, but you do. You're going to do page seven. Let me share that with you. You're going to do page seven. Okay, so you're going to do this page. It's page seven, seven in your book. Hmm. Hold on. I don't. Okay, so your page is going to look like this. I don't think it's page seven. Okay, I'll look into it. I'll tell you the page before we leave. Okay, so it's going to look like this, and you're going to read hummingbirds. Hummingbirds fly south to find food and water when temperature drops and daylight hours get shorter. Is that goes dormant, migrates, or hibernates? This, organi this organism, and you have to write which one it is, dormant, migrates, or hibernates. Humpback whales. Humpback whales feed in the Arctic Ocean all summer and swim to the warmer Pacific Ocean during the winter. Is that dormant, migrates, or hibernates? Grasses, to save water and nutrients, this grass shuts down during the cold winter months. This organism goes dormant, migrates, or hibernates. When the temperature drops, toads dig burrows into the soil to stay warm and sleep away the winter. This organism, goes dormant, migrates, or hibernates, write the word in the line. Instead of producing flowers and new leaves, rose bushes lose leaves and store water in the roots during the winter. This organism goes dormant, migrates, or hibernates. During the cold months, a groundhog stays in its burrow and its body slows down to save energy. This organism goes dormant, migrates, or hibernates. This is the um, worksheet that you are going to do, okay? Now, you're gonna do this one, it's just six little questions, plus you're gonna do a sentence, a science sentence, okay? So this is gonna be our last sentence for our paper, science. In science, I learned blah, 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 blah. This was important because blah, 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 blah. So, Two things. You're going to do this page and you're going to do this sentence in your page. These are the only two pages that I need to see pictures of on Friday. 
Now, why do I say Friday? Because this week the work is not gonna be due on Monday. It's gonna be due this coming Friday, friends, May 22nd, so I can finish your grades. Got it? All righty, guys, let me quickly show you. Uh, let me see what page that was for science so that I can give you the correct page. Mm, here we go. It is page 118 in your booklet. 118 in your booklet. Okay, this is a page that you are going to do and turn into me. Alrighty, friends. So this is it for science. Um, I hope you guys had an awesome uh, year in science. I know some of you have been saying one of the things that you've enjoyed more most is the project, science projects that we do and the science activities. So I'm so happy that you guys enjoy um, being in my class during science time. Alrighty, guys. I will um, make you all another video later, but this is it for science for this week. Thank you.